Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. So a while ago I made a really interesting video on how to handle destruction in Unity. It's a great video and a pretty simple method, so definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it. In the comments someone asked for an interesting application of this system, how to use it to make a screen shatter effect. That's a really interesting effect and it's pretty easy to do, so let's do it. It really just involves using that simple destruction combined with some basic logic. So it makes a real nice effect that is perfect for making a game over screen, or maybe hide a scene transition, or just an interesting player skill. Do you want to learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry? Then check out this video's sponsor, Jason Wyman, who makes some great game development courses. They are all extremely detailed and very well planned, with expert life support from Jason himself whenever you need help. And right now, as part of a Black Friday sale, you can get each course at 50% off, or you can get the Black Friday bundle, including all of them, for 75% off. The bundle includes all three courses, so you start off by learning c -sharp with the Programmer course, then build several games with the Mastery course, and finally learn how to structure your project, plan and design your game with the Game Architecture course. Jason is a veteran in the industry with many years of experience working on large teams and very complex AAA projects. The bundle also includes several other bonuses, like two months of Unity Plus, high definition art assets, and even a really nice hoodie. Check it out with the link in the description before the deal ends. Okay, so let's learn how to shatter our screen. Now, this is actually quite simple. Over here, I've got my demo scene. This is from the Polygon Synthi Asset Pack. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. So in order to make this effect, the first thing we need is some destruction. And since we want to destroy a rectangular screen, then we could just make a 3D, make it a quad. So we could just break up this mesh. However, I think the effect actually looks a bit better with some thickness, so instead of making a completely flat quad, let's go with a simple cube. So that's a cube and pretty much just flatten it out on the Z. So there you go, just a bit of thickness, I think the final effect looks a bit better like this. Now the next thing that is very important is the aspect ratio. We're going to want to place this mesh directly in front of the camera, so it needs to have the same shape. Now for the aspect ratio, I'm assuming the final game will be in the common 16x9, so 1080p, 720p, 4k, all of those. So you can just easily put this one with a scale on 1.6x0.9. There you go, we've got our nice cube in 16x9. Now before we start slicing this object, first let's just apply the final material so the slicing works correctly. So for that, just make a material and assign it. And now just for fun, instead of looking at this completely black box, let's use a nice render texture. So over here I'm just going to duplicate the main camera. Make sure it's not tagged as the main camera and down here on the output texture. Over here I've got a render texture, all I did was set the size to be 1920 by 1080 and just set this camera to render onto that texture. And finally make sure that the material is rendering using this texture. I covered render textures in another video if you want to learn more. And just like this we have a nice view of our camera in our virtual screen and the aspect ratio matches perfectly. Alright, so far so good. Now the next thing we need is to slice this mesh. So for that, you can do it using the ProBuilder tool, exactly like I covered in the destruction video. So the first thing is just convert this one into a ProBuilder, so open up the ProBuilder window and ProBuilderize this object. Then you need another object for the slice, so let's make another cube object. Also ProBuilderize this one, and again, let's go into Experimental, open the Boolean tool, and select both of them. Again, go watch that other video to see this process in more detail. Then all you need to do is make sure that the cube occupies the whole area. Then for the slices, really just position it. And here's some tips for how you can do this pretty quickly. You can put the scene in 2D mode, so up here you've got the button for 2D. So just click on it and everything is in 2D. And right now you can actually see anything, but you can just hide all of the environment objects. So either disable the game object or over here click on this button to hide them. Either way works. Okay, so in this 2D view you can now just go and go into ProBuilder onto the vertex mode and just make sure select hidden is on so that it selects both of the vertices. This is in 2D, but there's still two vertices there. And just click and drag to select them and position them anywhere. So there you go, something like this. Then just go ahead, hit on apply. There you go, we've got our new object. And now like I mentioned in that video, you might have a pivot error. So just go back into object mode. And over here, you've got a button for center pivot. And for some reason, you need to click twice. So you click once and it doesn't work yet. The pivot is still somewhere else but you click it again, there you go, now it's in there. All right, so it's really just repeating this process. You can just hide the original object, doesn't have to be enabled for it to work. So then just once again, select the cube, select the vertices, and just position them a bit differently. So this way you can see where the last slice was. So you can just go position them as close as you want. There you go, maybe something like this, hit on apply, go into the object, center, center, 
and back into that one, back into vertices and move them again. So there you go, it's a manual process, but it's pretty easy to do. So just keep doing that and keep making all the slices. So over here, I've got an object that I sliced previously. So I just did exactly that to cut up all the slices. Then on all the children objects, I just selected all of them and then I added a rigid body and a mesh collider. So just like that, all of these objects have physics. So if just with this, if I had on play, and if there you go, all of the object parts fall down. All right, so far so good. Now we want to apply some force. We don't want it to just fall straight down. For that, let's make a simple script. And now let's place it on the parent of all of the slices. So all these slices are a child of this object. And then over here, let's simply apply a force to all of those parts. So that's pretty easy. Let's make a simple awake. And then awake, we just cycle through all the children. So just do a for each on the transform. Then you try to get the rigid body. So you get the rigid body and then with that one, you can just call the function add explosion force. This one takes a certain force, then it takes an explosion position. Now this is a global position, so we need to find that. So here in the editor, just position a game object somewhere around here. Let's say we want to hit it more on the lower side so that it explodes up and back. Okay, so let's use sort of this position. And yep, that's pretty much it. Now just play around these values. And now as soon as we hit on play, and yep, there it is, we've got our nice screen explosion. All right, awesome, so far so good. So we have our virtual screen all sliced up and flying away, but of course we don't want to run this in the middle of our world. We want it to be exactly in front of the screen and we also want to manually trigger the explosion. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help, thanks. So for that, let's first position this object all the way off screen. The size of the Unity world is pretty much infinite, so let's put it on a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So it's way far away from anything else. Then let's make another camera just to render the sliced quad. So up here, just going to create, create a new camera. Then just position it looking straight at the quad. By the way, here's a quick tip for quickly positioning a camera. Just select the object, then position the scene view. Then you click on Control, Shift and F and it positions the camera exactly where the screen view is. So just like that it's looking. And then you can just go ahead and make this perfect. So put all of these on zero like that. Now in order to make sure that this camera renders on top of the other one, make sure this one has a higher priority. So usually the main camera starts off on minus one, so putting this one on zero does work. Then next thing is over here on the background type. Instead of skybox, let's go with a solid color. And for example, make the background all in black. And now really just position everything. So in this case, let's move the camera slightly forward. So there you go, just make sure that it fits perfectly. Now this effect will happen really quickly, so it doesn't have to be mathematically perfect. Just like this is perfectly good. So just do all that. Let's make the camera also a child of the object and start off with this disable. So there you go, that's the normal view. Then we're going to press a button, enable this one, and everything blows up. Okay, so let's handle another script to make that simple action. Then just make a game object to run this. And then over here, pretty simple. Let's first add the reference. So let's make it a serialized field of a transform. So here in the editor, let's just drag the reference, okay? And then just on private void update, let's listen to a key down. And if that's it, we just enable the game object. Okay, so just like that, it should already be working. Last thing we just need is to reposition over here the explosion position. So here it is, the scene is looking perfectly normal. Now let's say that I finally win or I get a game over or transition into something and boom, and there you go, everything turns into an image and everything gets shattered. All right, awesome. Okay, so with this, we have most of it working. Let me just mention one last thing. In my reply to that original comment, I said you could achieve this result with a render texture, and that's true, that's one approach. It's exactly what we have working here. However, like this, we're getting a view of the world that is updating. Now, this scene is pretty static, there's pretty much just only some smoke there. So when it turns into an image and shatters, you don't actually see it updating. But if there were moving cars and people, then it would be very noticeable. Now, maybe that's the effect you're going for. If so, then this works perfectly. But for this effect, I think it makes more sense to have the game look frozen while the effect plays. This is meant as a game over or a scene transition effect, so I think being static makes a bit more sense. 
So if what we want is instead a static image, then what that really means is that we just need to take a screenshot of the whole view and then use it on the exploding object. So instead of the render texture method, let's use the screenshot method, which I also covered in another video. In that video, I covered multiple methods depending on what you want to do. Here I've got one of the methods shown in that video. So in this case, I'm using the coroutine method. So I use the coroutine to wait for the end of frame. Then I grab the screen width and height. I take it onto the screenshot, so using read pixels and apply, and then I simply got a reference to the shadow material and then just call set texture. And now for the name here, for some materials, especially older materials, the main map is actually called the underscore main text. However, here I'm using the universal render pipeline lit material, and for this one it's called the base map, and the reference name is underscore base map. So just in case you use underscore main text and doesn't work, then go ahead and make this change. And the other thing is if you want to take a screenshot, naturally we want to take that screenshot before we actually enable the explode transform. Otherwise we would just see the slices and not the actual screenshot we want. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We're capturing a screenshot, rendering it onto a texture, and then using that texture onto our materials. So just like this, our entire effect should be working. So here is the scene. Now let's say I get a game over or I beat this level and then suddenly, boom, and yep, there it is. So a really nice screenshot effect. So I'm playing the game, then it triggers, the whole thing turns into an image, and it explodes, and the whole thing falls off. So we have a really nice screenshot effect. Awesome! So you can see how this would be perfect for making an interesting transition or a game over screen. There's also one more interesting thing you could do with this. You could take the exploding screen camera, the one that sees the parts, and lower the alpha down to zero. And then for the render type, make this an overlay camera. And then on the main camera, over here on the camera stack, just go ahead and add that one on top of this one. And now if you play like this, here it is, the game is playing, and I trigger it, and boom, there you go, the whole thing blows up, but the game is still playing. So this would be yet another variation of this effect. So maybe this could be a special ability on the player where it would deal tons of damage, and in order to show that much damage, it would shatter the screen, but then the game would keep going. So as you can see, this effect is quite easy to do, and looks pretty nice. Thanks again for that comment suggestion, this was a fun effect to make. Also don't forget to check out Jason's Black Friday course bundle with the link in the description, get a deep discount and learn how to make games from a veteran in the games industry. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.